Welcome to another Kitchen Sink Microscopy. I am Eric Rosenblatt. And, no, uh, you're not. <laughs> yes, I am. Liar. Yeah. I am, I swear. <laughs> when? <laughs> uh, so, I, <laughs> despite the um, confusion and, and doubt, I am, in fact, Eric Rosenblatt. Um, and uh, that's Floyd right there. <laughs> He um, he likes to put himself into these videos as well. Oh, he, he's like, here, listen to my ass scrape across the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah, don't. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, if you like Floyd, don't forget to like, share, subscribe to the channel because Floyd would like that. And, and we have Floyd T-shirts on the website. Yes, you can go to our Teespring store and pick up a Floyd T-shirt. He would love that. Um, yeah. Well, I guess that makes me Casey Rochford. I thought I was Eric Rosenblatt. Uh, and people do get us confused sometimes. <laughs> and we write our own music. Uh, that's where usually people confuse our voices. Mm -hmm. um, so you could stick around to the end of the episode. That would be really awesome. And then you can try to guess which one of us is singing, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if there's words. Words. Your words, yeah. <laughs> if there's lyrics, yeah. I mean, it, it would be... Uh, that's a little uh, drinking game, I guess. <laughs> you could start up. So you can find it at Spotify, Amazon, iTunes. But anyway, what do we want to talk about tonight? Well, <clears throat> I thought... You, you know, we have these kind of dangling ideas from a while back that we haven't really addressed. Oh, hi, Floyd. He's like, dangling? What? Yeah, I'm going to get that. <laughs> Sit the knock magic this, word. Knock this thing <laughs> off the table. Um, yeah, we, ha we, ha we have some ideas that have been swimming around in our uh, database for, for a while, and we haven't really gotten around to them. And I think it's time we should at least try to knock out a few of those and and one of them is the uh the concept of uh like a young earth oh yeah the the creationist kind of philosophy that maybe i, I it does vary between different factions but it's kind of yeah. like you know the earth is not billions of years old it's like tens of thousands maybe at the most. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard as few as 6,000, 8,000, 10,000. 12,000 yeah. or it's something. Never in, it's never an odd number for some reason. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> huh, that's interesting. <laughs> I, in, in fact, it's probably been 6,000 years old for the last 2,000 years. You know? <laughs> Just, I mean, if you want to get down to the, the kind of logic that it takes to, uh, to, to uh, really construct that kind of idea and, and really buy into it. Well, it makes sense if you're talking that long ago. Well, yeah. We didn't know any kind of like astrophysics or we, we had no information. All we knew was like there's the lights in the sky. And yeah, we had stories. They move around. around so. Yeah, so I mean, back then it, it makes sense that people could fathom that and, and that would be their uh, idea. And but, that was like roughly about the start of civilization, I think. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time since I took anthropology. I could be like, like, a, an order of magnitude off on that, but you know. <laughs> but it, it depends on where you are on the planet, because different civilizations developed at different rates and learned things. I mean, the Arabs were like kind of on top of their game. And Chinese, I think, too. That's probably um, why no one can agree then. Yeah. Ah, we've Let's... solved it. All right. Well, okay. like, share, subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for deep sink diving. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but there are people today, <clears throat> despite pretty 
pretty clear uh, evidence that that the universe and the solar system and by extension this planet is very very old like I mean you can argue about how many billions of years or millions of years but it's really freaking old and it's definitely not like 10,000 years old um, but there are still people today that cling on to that idea and and defend it like oh yeah the earth is really young and I'm just like well, what what's your evidence well because the Bible says so but does it <laughs> I mean I, I, it's been a while since I've read the Bible but have you even read it yeah I mean uh, and it's it's interesting to the degree that they will go to put their blinders on it's like you talk about like red shift blue shift all that stuff and and you you say, hey, look, the universe is expanding at such and such rate. We can tell if you yeah. like back calculate, uh, you know, based mm -hmm. off of that speed, you know, the, the velocity or whatever, assuming it's not changing any more than it is now. And you can. Uh, it's actually accelerating, so it's not a consistent. But is it constant? Is it, you know, a curve or. Well, I, I haven't curve? actually looked into that, but it's definitely, it's not a linear. Uh, difference. It's actually like accelerating ever so slightly. Right. Uh, but you know, I'm no astrophysicist, so for the astrophysicists what, out there, yeah. See, you know? see, if you're if you're looking at a chart, the, the velocity, if it has a curve, and the curve is pretty like normal, your acceleration graph is going to be pretty straight. Um, yeah, but. We're getting into physics and nerds. Well, yeah, right yeah, exactly. Uh, I, I, and I'd like to kind of honestly keep this to more of like a philosophical discussion. Mm -hmm. um, because th this one thing is something that kind of led me down a path of discovery um, and kind of sparked my interest in, in you know, applying science and intermingling it with religion and trying to explain things religious and spiritual things through science. That's why I'm still to this day into like ghosts and aliens and all kinds of random stuff. And I, and I, I think very pragmatically about it. Like I, you know, I want to understand these things. I've seen some things. I want to explain them scientifically. Um, you know, I know it's weird, but whatever. Um, but that, that, that one thing, like, the young earth thing because i i was one of those people <clears throat> i grew up in a christian family went to church many many different churches i didn't have a denomination i was, had like baptists and well I, I never went into the catholic thing but uh presbyterian and non-denominational churches and all this stuff but i was definitely like a christian person who believed in all that stuff and and i took it literally right like the creation story there's Six days of creation, right? Days, right? Yeah. And w at some point, and I, I, I can't really pinpoint exactly when this happened, um, like when I had this revelation, but at some point I had this revelation, I'm like, wait a minute, it says days in the Bible, but is it our days or is it God days? Like if, uh, uh, if if you're oh, yeah. like, you know if you pick a point that you're rotating around something it could have been a black hole at the center of the universe in which yeah. case a day could be a billion years yeah, yeah. exactly <laughs> like how does God measure a day if God is telling people like I did this in six days well but it began before the Earth even existed the sun didn't even exist so. You're not going to measure days based on the sun and the Earth's rotation around the sun and orbits and stuff, uh, you know, well, things like that. You would, you would, you'd have your own system of, of measurement. And if you're God, it's going to be big. Like maybe a God day is like a billion years. I have a question though. I mean, I'm no biblical scholar, obviously, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did God actually say? Did God actually say he did it all in six days? Because well, Genesis was written more from like a narrator sort of voice. Yeah. You know, like in the beginning, you know, like it, it wasn't, 
there wasn't really telling uh, a character development story so much as it was setting the tone, almost as if it's a work of fiction, even. Um, yeah. and, <laughs> and, and, it, and it basically just said, this is, this is what happened, this is how it happened, and like, here's all this complicated stuff, and we're going to explain it in like a page or two, you know? And Yeah, it, it is a little bit iffy in that regard. I mean, because it is people writing this down um, and declaring that it's the Word of God. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, how do you know? Well, you don't. Yeah. That's the thing. You don't know. But even then... Even if you assume that it is the word of God, uh, and and if you're in a discussion with somebody that thinks the earth is you know, a thousand years old or something like that, um, you have to go off of the premise that the Bible is correct. Um, and and that was the premise upon which I sat uh, in, in my early youthful days, uh, back when I was a teenager. Um, and... That key thing, the creation story, is really where it all starts. Like, people just ignore that. They, they gloss over that. Like, oh, it's only six days, and then all this other stuff, and we're just... And, and there are people who, like, spend their entire life, like, like genuinely scientifically studying the, the timelines and putting it all together and stitching it into a span of time and everything... And it's respectable, but, you know, that particular portion of the story is, is really critical. Um, because I, when I started looking at it, I was like, hmm, you know, it's talking about, like, the first day and the second day and stuff. And the Earth was kind of not really there quite. So what's a day without an Earth? Is it a galactic oh, yeah. rotation? That's good is point. it the galaxy orbiting or something like that? Is it, is it the universe like some universal something or other that could be like a billion years per rotation? I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and and if you if you in fact believe that this is God telling you how He did it, um, you know, revealing the secrets or something, the the measurement in God's terms, would not be terrestrial terms, necessarily. Huh. Um, so if you if you figure out from the Bible, like, however many thousands of years, or hundreds of years, or millions, or billions, or whatever a day was supposed to be, you could, like, find the celestial body that that keys up with, and find the planet that God's from. Like, oh, <laughs> man, we're going down Star Trek V <laughs> territory? What does God need with a starship? Yeah. <laughs> now yeah. I don't know like going back to the whole idea of like did God say it like I I could maybe buy it if the Bible was written by Christopher Nolan or something and it, it all started at the end with God like breathing really heavy covered in blood and then it says 6,000 years ago and then it goes into Genesis you know <laughs> because then well, you'd have like a delineation like between time but uh, yeah it, uh, it, it is really difficult because no one alive today was alive when these stories were penned. And they were penned and repenned and they were, by many, they were many penned people. by people that had been thousands or hundreds of years removed from the things they were writing about yeah. in the first place. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and and I, therein lies the problem. Yeah. Um, but as far as, like, is the Earth young? I mean... It, as somebody that, that has a, a very deep interest in space and space exploration and uh, my limited understanding of astrophysics and things like that, like, I, no, um, that's not, that's not possible. Um, like, the things that are said or claimed to have happened in the time frames they did just simply could not have. Um, and, and that is the quandary that kind of led me to question things. Because I have, I have my original space book from 1978. That, that my, the Junior Encyclopedia of Space? <laughs> no, no. It's a, 
It's a uh, book about little, little pocket book about space, um, but I loved it, and you know, it, it, it inspired an interest in exploring and, and learning about things, and yet at the same time, I was somebody that was raised in a Christian family. So how do you, you know, how do those two things come together? And, and if people in your school and your church are telling you the Earth is like twelve thousand years old, and you're like, yeah, but that's not even possible. Um, and it was in trying to solve that dilemma um, that that I kind of came up with this idea of, of like God years. Yeah, um, I, I've definitely had that thought too, but I've never really thought about tying it to you know other celestial body rotations and stuff. But some it is fun to like say okay take for granted that everything in the bible is like on some level like true in some way or, or another yeah i i have fun thinking about you know the kind of like allegorical origins of of things like uh isn't the moon like hasn't it been shown that it was like a chunk of earth that kind of like broke off and like fell into orbit and like way, way long ago. A long time yeah. ago. It may, in so, fact, be so, like multiple, like the thing that collided with Earth in yeah. the hot, crazy, chaotic early days of the solar system, something collided with Earth and like a bunch of magma went up and whoosh, there's the moon. Yeah. And, so say that an alien is explaining that to early man and he writes it down as Earth, Adam rib taken from Adam to create Eve, hmm. we see the moon as like feminine and stuff like that, Adam yeah. Eve hmm. coming from Adam's rib or whatever, you yeah. know, like, I, I don't know, maybe maybe the earth had ribs, I don't know. That's spare interesting. Ribs. <laughs> that has one spare rib. <laughs> That's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, yeah, like, I, and it, it's really interesting, uh, you know, because I was one who argued uh, on these angles many, many times, like the idea of, well, look at how clockwork perfection the universe works, which is completely ridiculous, mm -hmm. like looking back in hindsight. <laughs> but it is rather interesting. It's the like benchmark how... that we, we subjectively put as perfection. Well, it, it, <laughs> it is kind of remarkable that the moon has this kind of perfect orbit that faces us all the time like its own orbit matches the orbit around the earth like that's kind of crazy then okay it could just be like a coincidence like maybe it's just a lucky thing um but but it's kind of cool well there's like a, a i mean we, we do that with certain satellites and stuff so there's like a certain yep. amount of calculations we do that well yeah but so, i know i mean the, it doesn't matter that we have the way to design a way to do that. The fact that there is a way to do that can happen by random chance. Well, and then calculating a way to match that is is the the really cool part, you know. Like, well, and that, that's my point is like it's so remarkable that that happened, and I, I honestly think like it's remarkable that we even exist. Oh yeah, yeah, and we're even alive, like. Okay, well, you know, before Kepler, the Kepler satellite and stuff like that, we didn't know that there were planets out there at all. Um, and now through study and uh, analysis and things like that, basically it turns out any star you see out there has planets. And s quite a few of them. In fact, it's actually a rarity that there are not, like, Class M going to Star Trek uh, planets. Um, so, yeah. I, I've always found far more wonder in what humanity has done than in just ascribing it all to God going poof, you know? Yeah, like, I, I, I agree. Like, well, and maybe to me it's not a little less about what humanity has done. I mean, we've actually done some remarkable stuff given the limited resources and understanding we have. Um, but just the universe as a whole is un 
fathomably remarkable. Oh, yeah. Like, so much interesting stuff out there. Just crazy, wild things. Like, I, 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 I yeah. I don't want to say it's God, but it does kind of feel, like, spiritual, I guess. The, the more you think about it, like, how vast the universe is. And, but when you things. dig into the science and really start to understand what we have figured out about how these things came to be so seemingly perfect, it's really fascinating and really amazing how we figured this stuff out. Like on the shoulders of giants that's, that, that we built all this wealth of knowledge. That's true. And, and you know, like evolution, you know, like I, I, that's another thing that young earth creationists like to use kind of jump on is evolution they're like well evolution can't really happen because look how young the earth is and all this life must have just been put here the way it is and and it's like but we can see it happen you know well that actually that's a good point bacteria like, viruses yeah their generation cycle is so you, you don't have to go <laughs> back in time you can just simply observe the present yeah and see things happening the in the real effects time. yeah yeah like, like it's pretty clear that's how things work. Um, and that, again, uh, my young self, like, reconciling that, like, how do I, how do I deal with that? Like, well, maybe that's the way God designed things to evolve, to, to change over time and, and yeah. you know, adapt to their environments and things like that. Um, and the whole everybody's stuck on this time like oh it's this short span of time like why why is, explain to me where that's coming from because it, even in the bible like again the the the, the god days things like I, looking at genesis i could say well that's like six billion years right there that you're talking about because what Tell me the standard of measurement for a day when the earth doesn't exist yeah. and the sun doesn't exist because it does start before that. So what is a day? Um, and what was the rest day? Was that an ice age? Did time oh, stop? Like, yeah, what, what, what does that represent? If, yeah, and if how we're talking it, like a God year. Well, right? yeah. And, and <laughs> yeah. how does it turn into like, Sunday is the day that we're not supposed to go to work or something. Well, do we not go to work for like a billion years or something? I don't know. Uh, it, yeah. It, well, it was really Saturday. And, kill it, that's, <laughs> yeah. Good point. But, uh, anyway. That's <laughs> a whole oh, other man. episode about how Christianity bastardized Judaism and and we should talk about calendars, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, time... I was just having this argument, actually, with our, our friend Caleb uh, about things that are social constructs. Mm -hmm. It started with, with gender, but, uh, you know... I was oh, like, that's a hot-button topic I would, these days. Yeah, I was like, gender is a social construct. He's like, no, it's not. It's sex. And I was like, no, they're different things. And he's like, that's like saying race is a social construct. I was like... It is! Yeah. And then I was like, and so is time. You know, like, <laughs> at, we all put this, like, arbitrary marker between two places and called that a unit of time. Like, it's not like some some god came down and said, hey, this is a second. That's a second right there. Yeah. Write that no, down. It's, it's <laughs> more a matter of, like, a, a, some kind of standard of measurement that, that people can agree on. I was actually talking to a coworker about this. Like about, Fahrenheit and Celsius? Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Celsius makes a little more sense. So boiling point of water, freezing point of water, all that stuff. Well, I'm going to um, do a minute microscopy about that. Yeah. I was going to do a minute microscopy about New Year's, actually. <laughs> um, because people put so much significance in it. And my coworker does, too. And, you know, it was like, well... It doesn't mean anything. You're just turning a page on a calendar. It's all made up. And he's like, well, but isn't there a point where the, the orbit of the Earth begins? And I'm like, well, I don't know. If you could go back in time and see when the sun, like, ejected all the shit that turned into planets and stuff, like, maybe. But, like, orbits don't have regularity over that long of a span of time. Like, nope. 
There is no beginning and ending. New Year's means nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. And, okay, the only calculation, uh, the only thing that would, I guess, kind of make sense would be, like, solstices and equinoxes and things where, like, the tilt of the Earth is at some particular, uh, like, peak that, or something. That ever so slightly over time, too. Uh, well, that's the thing, yeah. But there, it doesn't really signify a beginning or ending of anything at all. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, the, there is no beginning. The Earth has been spinning around the, the sun, this giant fusion reactor, uh, for however long it has been. Um, <laughs> Maybe we're in a time loop. Yeah. I'm me own dad. My <laughs> ex-girlfriend is me mom. <laughs> oh, we're not going to go into Red Dwarf. I'm going to have to put my hat on twice, even though I don't have a hat. Um, wait, I do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, I, I don't know, I, I, I mean, it's hard not to talk about the science, though, because, like, there's so much evidence versus one book or a collection well, of books. Let's well, say. and that's the thing, it's like, to me, I look at data like that, right, like, mm -hmm. I make a distinction between data and science. Um, but can you make a prediction based on the data you have? Can you take the Bible and predict where a particular astral body will be a thousand years from now? Well, I, I, would, I would challenge people to do that. Um, but, you know, you go to places like NASA or other such uh, organizations, and they can do that. In, you know, like with relative, relatively good accuracy. And so I kind of lean towards those yeah. systems. Like they, they make a lot more sense because you can make a prediction. And so if you're talking about the past, uh, it's very likely that what you're saying is at least moderately accurate. Um, I mean, this is... It's an exercise in critical thinking, and 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 I don't say this to be like insulting, like it's it's not really an insult. It's just kind of like, I mean, there's actual data to show this, but mm -hmm. typically those who think critically tend to lean towards secular views. Yeah, and and that's not saying smart or dumb. You know, because I had a brilliant physics teacher that thought the Earth was 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it's it's not a smart, dumb thing. It's it's a critical thinking thing. Like, you can, you can grasp physics without critical thinking because it's not that abstract, right? Yeah. It's just math, you know? So that kind of makes sense to me, I guess, on some level. Mm -hmm. but, but it's like when you don't understand something and you are able to reason ways of figuring out like okay hey carbon dating it's not super accurate but i can take that window of accuracy and i can compare it to something that's more accurate that falls in to that same time frame and narrow it down and it's like that kind of thinking that leads you from a to b to c and you come up with like a, an, an answer that you can show data for and that other people can repeat like that's how you come to the conclusion that you know, like, science and data and things like that are pretty valid, and there's a lot of reason to believe them, you know? Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> oh, man, that is that's some good stuff. That I, I'm pretty passionate about that stuff. <laughs> so am I. I yeah. yeah. I, uh, I had a bunch of thoughts, but I might have had a little bit of beer, so <laughs> I'm starting to lose it. Um, I mean, that... I guess that's a good point to plug my book because that's a lot about what, what I wrote about, even though it was kind of supposed to be about me being cancer as an atheist, it was also a lot about my thought process and what, yeah. what got me to that philosophy. And that's, that's it really. It's like asking questions, looking for answers, well, finding data. That was that. Okay. That applying. was the point I was going to get to is like, everybody should be looking, should be aiming for the truth. Mm-hmm. 
and working together or if there's conflict trying to resolve it like the truth is the ultimate goal if you believe something wholeheartedly you should use every power every piece of knowledge you have to get to that goal um but yet you have people and not just the woo people but you got people in the scientific community too that cherry pick things and they you know because they want to prove something they believe and it's like oh, i have a huge problem with that I mean, because there there is a reality out there um but i mean you spending say... too much time fighting over the minutia might yield i don't know it, it just it wastes our time and spins our wheels like for no reason yeah um, i mean you you could say the scientific method to some degree is built on a form of cherry picking if if you see it incorrectly right no like, i i agree the scientific method though that's what everybody should be using yeah even like, if you're religious Frankly, like it, like um, it's easy to say. I have a hypothesis. I'm going to set out to prove it's right. But mm -hmm. the actual point is to say, I have a hypothesis. I'm going to do everything I can to prove it wrong. And if I can't, then I assume it's right. Yeah, you know exactly. Like, yeah, that's that's a really good. What, point. what was it? Spock said um, when uh, about uh, what, maybe it wasn't Spock. Maybe it was Popeye or Sherlock Holmes or something. <laughs> I don't. Know. But the, but it, it was something to the, to the effect of, like, you know, when all other explanations are exhausted, you know, except for the fantastical one, you know, that must be true, right? Or yeah, something I, I, I don't think that was Spock, but, oh, I mean, okay. it could have been. Dr. Like, Spock. Well, that's a... Uh, you make a good point. <laughs> um, yeah, it's like, there are some situations where, like, maybe the answer is something we... We can't explain yet, or don't understand yet. Well, and or... and, and that's a, the important thing about like artistry and spiritual belief and things. Like it could drive you down paths of discovery that you might otherwise not go down. So I see those things as valuable. Like right. the whole like ghost study, like. Because I I've, I've, I've seen some things, um, <laughs> and and like maybe there's something there, and it might actually be an epic discovery if if, if people actually go down that critically, like scientifically study these things, um, we might find something out about ourselves that is really important. But then you have a bunch of people. Who are like, you know, all, woo, you know, like, spiritualist and tarot cards and astrology and all this stuff. And, like, that muddies the waters. Yeah. And, and prevents actual discovery about, like, really important things. And, and that's the thing that kind of, like, where I kind of went. Like, I was like, you know, there's something really important here. Um, I want to know the answers to it and I want to share them when I discover them. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, but I, I, it goes back to the, the, the point, like, wait, it, do, it doesn't go back because I've never <laughs> mentioned this before. Uh, more beer. Um, you know, assume nothing. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't understand it, in fact, that, that's actually a good point too. If you have a conflict with somebody about a thing, right? You're a young earth creationist person or an atheist and you're having a debate. Well, wouldn't like in order to deal with something, uh, a conflict, you need to know your enemy. Like not that, not that it's like guns blazing kind of enemy but a debate enemy or something like that mm. um people you're in conflict with so researching and understanding where the other person's coming from like the philosophies the doctrines whatever it might be all the data understanding that stuff like if you think the earth is six thousand years old you should be studying science yeah um and 
if it in fact proves like if you cannot prove it and you are finally convinced that it can't possibly happen well that's good yeah. like you are one step closer to the truth and, and the, the important thing to remember is that just because uh so it's like if if you came to the realization that the earth is billions of years old it doesn't disprove god created it no and that's the whole thing yeah i am atheist yeah and i still have this hope that there is a god out there well a higher being like I, some, I don't, something like see, that I'm, I'm also an atheist i don't necessarily hope for that so much but it, it's like I, I i understand that you cannot prove a negative yeah and and, and to really grasp what that means it would be like it, i if this is my hypothesis i'm i'm going to say like if if i can't destroy this thing with telepathy mm -hmm. it, it you know it, it must be you know you illusory know, like it's not real yeah basically yeah. like you set out with a hypothesis of something that really just can't happen mm -hmm. and then by like not being able to do it you're like well you know <laughs> well and that that's important like your methodology too the scientific method like yeah. it's, it's very important to have the correct methodology um yeah I, I i hope people out there get where you know pick up what we're putting down um yeah and i mean there's been some um everybody put put so much weight on the pope but there's been <laughs> you know a, a lot of you know uh proclamations from popes in our lifetime you know kind of moving people towards science ever so slightly here and there yeah doesn't the vatican have like a space telescope now oh, maybe. like like a badass telescope like they're yeah i think they do hmm. yeah there's a vatican telescope but anyway go yeah. ahead yeah Keep peeping at god in the shower <laughs> yeah <laughs> could be yeah <laughs> those, those priests you know <laughs> well here's the thing if you want to prove something you're going to have to convince a lot of skeptics a lot of people that are very hard to convince and you better have some damn good evidence um, if, if you want people to believe what you're saying yeah and and yeah like the more fantastic the claim the more awesome your evidence better be you know exactly yeah yeah which also kind of kind of plays off that not spock quote that i was trying to remember <laughs> you know uh, it's kind of the flip of that it's like you know if if you're gonna basically prove that something really strange happened like you have to really eliminate all the possible explanations well and you know it is possible there could be some kind of weird phenomena out there um be it god or whatever um and i think it's important that people objectively or as objectively as possible try to study it um I, all i know is the more i look up into space the more spiritual i feel like it is a fantastic place and the more you know Tope, the more you the know, more you know we're gonna have a, <laughs> you know but the more you know like it really reinforces that like whether you're an atheist who is purely science-based or whether you're like a christian or a catholic or a muslim or whatever um like there's some amazing stuff out there the universe is f fucking fantastic like we we're all in this together because we're basically a bunch of tiny little ants sitting on a ball of dirt hurtling through space towards a black hole um yes there is a black hole at the middle of the galaxy <laughs> Don't want to rain on your parade, but it's going to happen someday. Um, yeah, and 
And I think understanding these things is really, really important. Um, and however, I, I look at it more from an interpretational standpoint, like God or data or whatever. It, it's just interpretations of the same, well, different facets of the same stone, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think people can agree that the universe is an awesome place. Oh, yeah. It's definitely like a huge mind fuck to, uh, to see those, like, those videos of, like, perspective. Yeah. You know, like, the, the little, like, pinhead in the one end of the football field and then like you know the next planet in our solar system is like uh, like three quarters of the way down the football field and that's like another pinhead and and it's like that's amazing and when you get out to pluto pluto you're like seven miles away or something that's <laughs> another fucking pinhead you know like <laughs> oh yeah yeah oh man that that kind of stuff is so cool and and that's the stuff that like makes everybody marvel whether you believe in a higher power that that maybe a higher power is behind all this or something um or you are a cold-hearted scientific data-driven dickhead um um, (laughs) but it's beautiful like Everybody can agree that it, it's marvelous. Like, oh yeah, like I mean, and not only, not only the, the life aspect, but art. Oh. You know, like, like all of this chemistry and physics came together to create biology, which molded itself into something that could recreate itself, which mm-hmm. then like became diverse and so diverse that there was like this like ultimate cycle ecosystem built where there was different kinds of life that fed off of each other and 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 it grew into social structure and civilization and language and and then and then art and music and, oh. and you know like abstract thought that elicits emotion in other people you know like like our episode about music as a language you know Mm -hmm. like that that probably was the first language really you know oh very likely art in general yeah art like absolutely oh man that's totally gonna be i mean what what is written language other than like you know a drawing right (laughs) totally yeah (laughs) it's art you know like the thing we take for granted when we sign a check or whatever. Well, and, and yeah, written language is probably a simplified version of art because if you use it every day, you have to, you, you can't be spending like half an hour drawing out like a complex <laughs> drawing just to like say hello. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, your signature is more like, you know, copied more times than the photo of the tennis girl scratching her bum. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, that is. There's so much to think about there. Yeah. I, yeah. I I just I always find endless fascination with all the science that got us to where we are today. You know, and and we barely scratched the surface in that regard. Like, we are every day we're amazed at like. Well, I would hope, I mean, come on, like (laughs) space, keep following it. Um, Every day I am amazed at the new discoveries and and, and stuff that completely overturns things we thought before. That's the scientific process. Like you revise what you know, um, things like that. It's just like, oh my God. A book, a a book, is more amazing to me than the idea that the Earth was poof made in a week. 
right? Yeah. Because a book is life. Yeah. It was once a tree, mm -hmm. and it contains words, which are the art that formed the language that we communicate with. And it contains abstract imagination that conveys an entertaining story to other people. You know? Oh, yeah. Well, so and, many and can cool move things. people. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just a freaking book that everyone's like, yeah, whatever. I'm just going to take this and get like 50 cents for it at the store. You know, like, dude, it's, it's a, a book. It's a bunch of like sheets of shaved off trees. Yeah. Um, yeah, with some scribbles written on top of it. Um, yeah, oh, man. And to think, eventually all this is going to be gone. Like, who knows? It could be tomorrow. It could be a billion years from now. Like, maybe someday we're going to fall into the black hole and we're going to go to some kind of other world or something like that <laughs> or you know the giant flaming meteorite like the earth is going to be obliterated and everything we've created everything we know will be gone in the blink of an eye in this it's dimension. yeah well, <laughs> that's a good point in this dimension yeah hmm. that that's not a reason to stop creating right and exploring um because that creation and exploration like leads us well, to understand things yeah. and be able to deal with giant flaming meteorites I mean, technologically. It's all, technically, it's all the more reason to create and to live life to its fullest and mm -hmm. to, to you know seize the day, carpe diem, right? Yeah. Because when you when you have a secular point of view, this was like kind of like the core point of my book. If you've got no afterlife to look forward to, this is all you've got, right? You yeah. gotta make the most of it. Oh yeah. You gotta yeah. you gotta live it. You gotta be a good person because if you're a dick, you're gonna have a miserable time because nobody's gonna like you. You know, it, like things like that. Uh, well, it, my own personal philosophy: leave a legacy. Yeah. Like, take what you know, pass it on to other people, and let them improve on it. That's immortality. Yeah. Yeah. Someday I'll be in some history book. I hope. Uh, I don't know. Pro probably not, but maybe. <laughs> um, I I would enjoy that. Like, I, honestly, that's the only thing I would really care about is being the next Tesla or so, somebody that, not the not the company, the the guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nikola Tesla. Yes. Um, the OG Tesla. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And not the band, but mm -hmm. they're fucking cool too. Oh yeah, but <laughs> being an inspiration to people to to learn and explore and try and and don't be afraid of failure, like because failure is actually the best teacher. Um, that was a, kind of one of the best lessons I've ever learned. Yeah. Is like if if you fuck up, you've just learned something. Um, that was really poignant, and not to shit on that, but I was just thinking it would be really cool if the band Tesla did a commercial for the car Tesla. Oh man, <laughs> that's a good point. Yeah. Oh wow. Modern this day is... cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> this has gone down some like crazy paths. Uh, this is actually like a really good. I I I enjoy the fact that we can like rip off of like just a sentence. Philosophy married with science, it's its mm -hmm. the funnest kind of discussion, really, because mm -hmm. there's no wrong answer, right? True. Even though you're talking science and stuff, like, there's there's always something that we haven't explained yet. Well, know? as long as you know how to talk science, as long as you right. understand yeah. what it is. Yeah, if, if you're completely just, like, dismissive of science, it kind of hits a wall, right? But Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, anyone open-minded enough to have a discussion about that... Uh, and and there are religious people or young earth creationists that will engage in that. Oh yeah, you know, like and I that's respect a good that a lot. Yeah, like, that's a good yeah. conversation, and mm -hmm. I I enjoy those more than most conversations, to be honest. Well, yeah, I I actually <laughs> drove from like San Diego to 
some somewhere in Nevada. San Bernardino. Yeah. Get your I, kicks. <laughs> on Route 66. <laughs> um, I don't know. If that's so, so I <laughs> drove from somewhere in uh, California to Nevada with my coworker, who was a, a devout Christian. And we got in a debate about would a clone have a soul? Mm. Like hours of discussion driving across the fucking desert. Um, <laughs> and, a horse with no name. Yeah. <laughs> like, and it was actually a pretty interesting conversation. Um, and I would hope that everybody learns something. The, the thing is like, you know what? You don't know shit. That That's the first lesson. Like, you don't know shit. Um, if you think you know it all, Dunning-Kruger effect, look yeah. it up, um, you know nothing. Um, <laughs> so, it's, you know, similar to that, uh, if you think you can do everything by yourself, you're full of shit too, because everything that we are has been a concerted effort by many, you know, like, oh yeah. You know, like you, you really, if you were the last person alive on earth, you probably wouldn't live very long. Like, no, that, <laughs> well, there's a really good, uh, conversation to be had around the development and production of the pencil, like create a pencil with nothing. Um, and people are like, well, that's easy. It's just some graphite and a little stick and there's a eraser. Yeah, but you have to look into like, what are you doing, Floyd? I'm making a pencil, man. Making a pencil, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not just graphite. And then how do you get the graphite? Um, you know, what is the particular mixture that you use for the core of that? Like, what kind of wood? How do you drill it how do you get that thing inside there how does the ferrule fit like well and graphite is you... carbon right it's it, like well but <laughs> it is but but a pencil isn't just graphite well no yeah but it's, it's a mixture of things yeah so how does that come into being it's like not even a real graphite anymore is it uh it it's not lead anymore it used to be lead oh lead. Oh, yeah yeah um but you know the little like ring that goes around there is made of aluminum. Like, how do you get the bauxite out of the earth? How do you refine it into aluminum? Like, how is an eraser made? Who makes it? Like, where does it all come from? Like, even Double a pencil. Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> well, even a pencil yeah. is a remarkable piece of engineering. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, oh man, I this. Yeah, we're we're probably that might be just about all the time yeah. we have today. I think we went from um, a young Earth to how to make a pencil. I mean, like that. <laughs> the, the the direction that this should show be the goes. last soundbite. Uh, <laughs> oh man! But yeah, the, like the the rabbit holes we go down are just endlessly fascinating. Like, yeah, from, well, the, from start to finish. The, the point is, like, <laughs> try to understand things. If something is adversarial to you, like in conflict with what you believe, you have to understand it. It's like a keto. If you don't know what your opponent is going to do and how to manipulate them to throw them to the ground, not that you would want to do that necessarily in a philosophical debate, I would hope. <laughs> um, but even if you did, you'd have to understand where they're coming from. You have to know that person very well um and that's how it is with philosophy you have to understand where everybody's coming from um yeah i dig it yeah I, oh. man oh so if you uh if you think the earth is pretty young um you know like Six thousand, ten thousand, however. Go, go, just say less than a million years yeah, old. You yeah, know? I, <laughs> you know, give us give us your rationale, um, maybe from a philosophical standpoint, even because um, 
you know, when you when you get into the science debate, it does kind of get stale. Yeah. Be, because you get you get scientists frustrated with people like ignoring data, and you get people frustrated with like data trying to, or you know, their perception is that it's trying to disprove God when it's really just trying to say, hey, you know, the Earth is old. <laughs> but, well, and and maybe there's some people who try to do that and and there are people who are like feeding off of that like yeah. well if that one guy is trying to do that everybody's trying to do that yeah and and that's what i was getting at is like you know i am a space person like i'm a space cadet uh <laughs> i love space um Pinkle, squirrel, and, blip, blip, blip. Yeah. <laughs> and at the same time like I'm a spiritual person too. Like I believe there is the force out there, um, and I'm slowly trying to put those together. Wait, wait. Just flip the thing right there. Right here. <laughs> there. Yeah. <laughs> the force. Yes. Um. Yeah. I. I kind of believe in the force, like whatever it may be. Um, I, I don't know if it's God or not, but, I, you know, if one day God came down to planet Earth and was like, behold, I am God, and like, I don't know, just smooshed a bunch of mountains and like, <laughs> raised the oceans or something, I'd be like, yep, that's legit. Um, <laughs> but until then... All we have to go on is science. Yeah. The evidence before our eyes. Yeah. Well, and the things we can test and experiment on and reproduce and things like that. Um, okay, this is... <laughs> there. <laughs> and that's the important thing. Like, if, if you really believe those things if you want to convince people you have to understand the other side if you're a scientist that you know wants to convince young earth creationists um well you have to understand where they're coming from if, if you're a young earth creationist that wants to convince scientists you have to understand where they're coming from so learn the other's ways it's really not that hard and uh you know if it changes your mind that's a good thing. Um, mm -hmm. Like, then you're one, again, one step closer to the truth. Uh, we could do a whole episode on truth. Oh, man. Yeah, but I think I, I, that, that, that's probably about all the time we have for yeah. today. Um, but damn, this is a good episode. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thanks for deep sink diving with us into Young Earth and pencils and, and all other Star manner. Trek and Spock and yeah, <laughs> Tesla's and space and the final part. <laughs> Hello, I'm Patrick Stewart, Star TV <laughs> Star Trek, the, the next, next generation. generation. <laughs> And the host of the documentary series, MGM, When the, the Lion Roars. <laughs> I found that book, by the way. <laughs> well, man. Uh, well, that's, that's a whole... That's a completely different angle.